Hello and welcome. As always, I'm Abby. This is Stories Lived, Stories Told, and today I invite you to join me and Haruka Suwabe as we take a communication perspective on her experience as a Cosmo Teens Fellow. To take a communication perspective is to consider what we're making and how we're making it through our communication practices. This means we pay close attention to patterns and contexts, stories and relationships, and that we use curiosity, mindfulness, collaboration, and dialogue to create better social worlds. Our conversation partner today is one of the CMM Institute's Cosmo Teens Fellows, Haruka Suwabe. For some context, the CMM Institute, which sponsors this podcast, has also created a number of resources that teach mindfulness around communication and relationships to kids. And those are the Cosmo Kids and Cosmo Tweens activities. I have links to those in the show notes if you want to check those out as well. Those are free activities and can be used by anyone who interacts with kids. The dream was to expand these activities to go beyond kids and tweens to teens. And there was no better way to determine what teens wanted to talk about than to involve young people in this project. And so that's how the Cosmo Teens Fellowship came to be. So all throughout this month of January, we are having conversations with each of the five Cosmo Teens Fellows. This is a part of that ongoing conversation. So let's continue with Haruka. Hi, Haruka. Thanks for being on the podcast today. Hello. I would love for you to tell my listeners a little bit about yourself. You are one of the Cosmo Teens Fellows. You're 17 years old. What else do you feel like is important for people to know about you going into this conversation? Yeah. As you said, I am 17 years old. I'm still in high school. I'm working on different things right now. I'm really interested in the STEM field, but also providing opportunity and like seeking for opportunity, which the Cosmo Teens really was able to provide me. Awesome. Well, can you tell my listeners what the Cosmo Teens Fellowship is? Well, the Cosmo Teens Fellowship is like a group of students all around the world. This year, it was five people who are in their teens, maybe early 20s, trying to figure something out and like do a collective project together to help make this a better world and like do something that they're really passionate about. That's awesome. So. How did you learn about the fellowship in the first place? How did you get connected to the CMM Institute? My way is kind of interesting. Like some of the students had like a visitor come in. But for me, I had a teacher that I was working with with the whole time. And I'm currently trying to create like a global community for high schools around the world. And he was like, if you're interested into that, this program might be really interesting for you. And I read about it and I was like, wow, this is this sounds amazing, but it's like really selective what I get in. And I was really worried about it, but it was a great fit for me because I really liked the global community idea and I was able to get the fellowship. And I learned later on that there's like a lot of people who are already connected to CMM, unlike me. That's what I kind of realized when I started doing the podcast that I just, you know, picked CMM as the theory to be the topic of my podcast because I learned about it when I was studying communication. And I just happened to come across the Institute, which is a miracle, by the way, because not every communication theory has its own Institute to support it and to get it out into the world. And so I really was surprised to see the community that already existed and very excited to be a part of it. I don't know your experience so far, but everybody that I've gotten to work with has been really amazing. It's been really amazing. Also, the people who are working there, like the mentors that are helping us are really caring. I had one time where I'm like struggling with something personal and they were always like, oh, think about the project, but put yourself first. And they're like Mm -hmm. always super kind. And it's amazing to be a part of this group. Yeah, they've been really awesome. What have you like learned from them? What has it been like working with them and with the group so far? I noticed It's really interesting to see how like we developed as a group. Of course, 
we all have different things to do. We all are in different countries. We're all different ages. Some people are working. Some people are in college. Some people are in high school like me. So we have like different amount of time we can devote. And I noticed that there's so much fluctuations in the time that we each devote, but we all like come together and try to create the best thing possible, which is really nice. I feel like some people have like ideas that I've never think of. Mm. So like the comic book idea, one of the girls had it. I would have never thought of creating a comic book and like I would have never thought of creating a book. But after seeing her whole layout and how she thought this through, it was one of the best ideas I've ever heard, which was really nice. That's awesome. One of the, I just heard this language for the first time. I was reading a book and the woman used the phrase collaborative reimagination. It just hit me because, you know, collaboration is such a core part of CMM and then imagination being not something we really talk about a lot, but is at the core of everything. Like you have to use your imagination to come up with anything. And so imagination clearly plays a huge role in the project that you guys are doing right now. And to be able to collaborate is clearly like adding so much value because you talked about that global community or perspective. And I can see that that's really important to this project. Yeah, everyone here is adding something in. And that's one of the best things about the CMM. Yeah, you had talked about the global community you wanted to create being part of the reason why you were drawn to the fellowship in the first place. But like, what else was going on in your life? What was the context of you making the decision to apply for the fellowship? Well, like I said, I was creating the global community. And I was, first of all, really interested in connecting communities because the same exact idea. I thought maybe having a bigger group, maybe having groups with people who have different backgrounds would create something bigger and more like fascinating because Mm -hmm. we all have different ideas. And I decided to apply for this because first I was like, this is something I could try. This, This can be interesting, but also like I really was stuck on the project that I was doing on the side as well. And I just needed some inspiration and I thought like applying for this might give me that inspiration on how to connect and how to use my connections through the project. Yeah. What was the other project that you were working on? The other project I'm working on, well, I'm still working on it. I'm trying to create like a organization that helps connect high schools around the world to solve global issues. And we're in the process of connecting the high schools right now, but We're planning to like make this a consecutive thing every year so then I can pass it down to the next generation, which is my goal. That's really exciting. I can definitely see how these things go hand in hand then. So you've just only known about CMM and the whole theory is still probably pretty fresh to you. So I'm curious about how you understand it in your own life. I understand it as something really new to me. In the beginning, they give us a whole introduction, what they are. And also, I read their, like, book. They sent me the book they made for, I think, Cosmic Kids. And it was, like, really interesting to me because I didn't know before. And after reading the whole book they made and also, like, their webpage, it was, wow, there's this amazing thing going on. And I didn't know about them. But thank God I know about them now because I'm able to be a part of it, which is really nice. That's exactly how I felt because I only learned about the Institute in, I think it was like November of 2021 by a couple months from then I was working with them and it was great. And I think they do exist in the world of academia. They have a presence there, but what I'm excited with the podcast and what I think you guys are doing too, is to help bring all the work that the Institute's doing to a lot of other people, people outside of academia, younger people that I think do need to be a part of the conversation. Yeah, it's fascinating how they go for like all ages from like little kids to like adults doing the fellowship. And it's like really nice that they provide opportunity for like all ranges and educate all ranges. Yeah. What's it been like to try to translate all of the ideas and tools of the theory into something that is accessible for teenagers and young adults? Well, when we were thinking about the idea, we had like a couple months where we were really stuck. We had an idea that we wanted to create something 
for like teens, of course, we were like thinking, well, what really connects to teens? And then we started noticing that we want to go into like the mental health part. One of the girls provided the idea. Everyone was like, wow, that's the thing we should go with. The comic book? Yeah. What's been the most exciting part of the fellowship so far? I feel like the most exciting part is, of course, meeting the fellows. They're all really nice. They all are like super caring. And I love meeting the mentors. But especially because it's a comic book and especially because it's like a physical thing, it's really nice to see like your work and like how something you really wanted is getting structured. I feel like that's the best thing when you're doing a project. So that's going to be really exciting. Yeah, it's good to have a, I guess, creative outlet is the right thing. Like that's, I'm so passionate about the podcast and what makes it so fulfilling is that it's like a real creative endeavor and I get to use my imagination to come up with something cool to put out in the world. And I think that probably goes for you as well. What's been the most challenging part of the fellowship so far? I think the most challenging part, I think there has to be two. The first one is, of course, um, thinking about the idea. Like we said, it was kind of a struggle to think about the idea, but also the communication as well. We all are in different countries. We all are in different positions. I really struggled in it because sometimes I missed a meeting. I have too much work and I can't go. Like That's kind of like some of the things that I struggled with when we were doing this project. Yeah, communicating with people in a bunch of different time zones is definitely mm -hmm. a challenge on its own. Yeah, like one of the girls who was like, we're like 10 p.m. here. And I'm like, wow, I'm like noon right now. So thank <laughs> you for like adjusting to my time zone. And it's really nice that like some of the girls are like providing like so much and devoting so much time for it. Yeah, still making time for it, even among all of your other obligations is a challenge too. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that coming up with something new is a challenge on its own. Like you're doing something that's never been done before and there's not really a blueprint to follow. And even the people that are your mentors don't exactly know where it's going, that you're all coming into this in a very unique position. Does that feel like a challenge on its own? I think it is a challenge because we are the first Cosmo Teens Fellowship and it's like nothing we tried before. It's also teens, which is kind of complex age for most of the people. But the mentors really helped. When we told them that we wanted to make a comic book, they were like, absolutely. And then they shared us their writer, their illustrator, which made the whole process way more easier because yeah. we didn't have to take the time of finding an illustrator, talking about how it goes. Like they're like already know CMM Institute. Yeah, that's awesome that you've gotten to build those connections and yeah, I'll be learning together as it goes along. Mm -hmm. What is it that, if anything, you could, you know, put your finger on, what have you learned so far from this whole experience about this project or about the theory or what have you learned about yourself during this project? For this project, I've learned that, well, I knew, but I still learned that it's, one of the best things to collaborate with people it was amazing to like communicate and I also learned that like a lot of the people are like this going through the same exact things as me one of the things I learned is I struggled with like working like consecutively and having ideas consecutively thinking about ideas like all I see is like oh, I was able to accomplish this. I was able to do this with some of my peers. But through this project, I was able to learn that like there's the, the learning process and how like everyone struggles with something and like there's ups and downs in the work. And like, it was really nice to see how like we can progress through the project with my peers and work through it. Some things I learned about myself was like, I noticed myself like and my work ethic and I noticed my interest towards this area like way more like I was interested in the global community thing but I didn't notice that I was like this interested 
into like like learning more about the mental health, learning more about also like how to create a comic book and like the structure of it. Yeah, that's neat. What do you see or how do you see your work with the fellowship maybe spilling into the other areas of your life? I'm curious about how, you know, your work with these ideas about communication maybe even shows up in the work that you're interested in, in like the STEM field. I think the work is, of course, going into my normal work in school and like outside of school, like I've been always interested in like biology and like engineering. And that's like one of the good reasons why I really want to do mental health, because I know like the mechanism, what's going in the brain that causes the mental health, Mm, like how people go through it, but also like by doing this global project with the fellowships, I was able to learn how to communicate with different time zones. I feel like that was one of the biggest things like, yeah. oh, I, I'm connected with a high school in Japan. And I'm like, this is a 14 hour difference. Like, how am I able to do it? But through this fellowship, I was able to learn, okay, so we were able to do it with like this schedule and this schedule. So maybe thinking of it, in a different way would be nice. Yeah, that's great. Why do you feel like it's important to have conversations about mental health with young people? I think having conversations about mental health is really important because it's something everyone struggles with and it's something we have to learn about and like live with for the rest of our lives. But also it's something that we don't talk about. It's A lot of the teenagers and a lot of people, we are starting to learn about mental health, but a lot of people think it's like a taboo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe being able to learn about it helps educate people that it's something you shouldn't be embarrassed about, something everyone goes through, something we should accept and we should take care of ourselves. through the fellowship that you're doing, you're kind of giving people some language to be able to talk about it. Because I think part of why it stays a taboo topic is because people don't have the right language to describe what they're experiencing or to know that they're not alone in it. Mm -hmm. And it's really amazing to like hear that because I know that all of us, all my peers, everyone is going through it and being able to notice that everyone is going through it but we don't talk about it so sometimes you feel like you're alone but doing this project helped me notice that like we're actually not alone because we're just literally talking about it right now yeah it's really nice yeah and you just want to bring that to everybody else as well Mm -hmm. well my last question for you is of course using the language of cmm what does a better social world look like to you how do you define a better social world and How do you think we get there or what ways are you working right now to get there? I think a better social world is a place where everyone gets the opportunity to express their feelings, express their interest. For example, the mental health comic book is expressing what you struggle internally and it's something that everyone goes through and it's creating a community with that But it's also being able to, as a minority in some of the areas, like as a woman in STEM, like there's some areas that you're not well represented. I don't really know that much women in the STEM field. Mm -hmm. Being able to like be equal and showing that's a normal thing. And I definitely see your work with the fellowship and creating Cosmo teens together as taking steps towards a better social world to get to the kind of social world that you are describing. Joining all of like CMM Institute and being able to be a part of it made me feel like we're like stepping forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's cool for us to get to come in at the point that we're at because the CMM Institute has existed for, I think like 11 years now and they've done a lot of really cool things and it's exciting to be a part of this next wave of cool things that's just pushing further and further into that better social world, the one that we are going to inherit as young people that we want to make into something that we actually want for ourselves. CMM has been working on it the whole time, but I would love to see like more institutions and like more people trying to work harder 
and like trying to create, like give opportunity to some of the students who don't have the opportunity. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to keep up with the rest of your progress on this project mm -hmm. and see um, what emerges, what becomes of all the work that you all have been doing together. And I'm excited for you. And I just hope that this can continue to be such a good experience for all of you. Thanks for talking to me today. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that is all for our conversation with Haruka. This episode, as I mentioned, is part of our ongoing conversation. So stay tuned for our other conversations with the fellows because you're going to want to hear from each of them and what each of them have to say about their experience, as well as their hopes for this comic book they are creating. Their comic book will be made available in 2024. So I'll keep you updated on that as well whenever that becomes available if you want to check it out. At the end of each episode, I like to offer some questions to reflect on, and this acts as a kind of next turn for us, so the conversation doesn't stop when the episode does. Today, the question I'm going to have you think about is the one I have at the top of the show notes, and it is, where in your life are there opportunities to find community and create connection by talking about experiences that have not been talked about before? Obviously, this question is inspired by what Haruka shared today and her own desire for community, which I think many of us share, and then also the power of having language and kind of overcoming taboo that's on certain topics like mental health, and that perhaps it's even the most important to find community around those things because they feel a lot harder when we feel like we're isolated with them, but a lot of times we're not. A lot of people share experiences that we ourselves might have had as well. So again, keep that question in mind. Spend some time reflecting on that. I hope that can perhaps open up some new conversations or new thoughts and feelings in your own life. I'm so happy to have you reach out to me. You can share your reflections to this question as well as your own questions or ideas. You can do that through email, the website, or by commenting on Instagram and YouTube. And links to all of those places are also in the show notes to make that easy for you. Another great way to keep the dialogue going is to share this episode with someone you want to invite into the conversation. So I invite you to invite someone else in as well. As always, I'm supported by the CMM Institute for Personal and Social Evolution. This podcast is just one of many initiatives designed to create space for more conversations that move us toward those better social worlds we hope to create. Of course, you know their other initiatives include Cosmo Kids, Cosmo Tweens, and now Cosmo Teens. They also have a newsletter, other fellowship opportunities, and projects like Cosmopolis 2045 that are neat as well. Once again, those links are also in the show notes if you'd like to learn more. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being curious, and thank you for being a part of this story. Keep creating mindful moments. Until next time, I'm Abby, and this has been Stories Lived, Stories Told.